Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for spending part of your day. We're going to get started. We're going to give people another minute to log in, and then we'll get started. Great. We'll have people joining us as we get going here, but why don't why don't we get started? Um, again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you all so much for joining us from wherever you're joining us from. I want to introduce myself and my colleague. My name is uh, Joseph King. I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Windwire. And over the next hour, I'm going to be having a conversation with Winwire's co-founder and CTO, Vineet. Vineet, good to talk to you again. Absolutely, Joe. Always a pleasure. Uh, I know we are doing this after quite a while, but always uh, exciting to talk about uh, all the things that are happening in the universe of generative AI. Yeah, so so let me set some context. If If you're new to CTO Tech Talk Live, we've previously pre-recorded these and they live on Winwire's website. We promote sound bites on LinkedIn, um, but we decided to take this one live. Um, the objective is to engage with a lot of you. We have a lot of questions that we've gathered from clients and our partner, Microsoft, um, but we know we don't have all the questions covered that might be on your minds if you're involved in the Gen AI journey. So we wanted to take this live. Um, feel free to post your questions in the chat window. Uh, we will try to answer as many of them as we can. Of course, the recording of this will be shared in the next one to two days. We're also going to be putting it on our website, winwire.com, so you can always check out previous recordings there as well. Um, and you can also write to us at Marketing at Winwire for any clarifications or if you have any um, interest in following up with us, I will personally um, reply to those. Um, so um, with that, why don't we go to the next slide, please? Um, a lot of the content that we're going to be sharing over the next hour is mainly from a couple sources. One is secondary research from places like IDC and Gartner, but really, and I think this is what distinguishes this format and uh, what we're about to share with you, it's really a compilation of um, experiences that Vineet has had over the last year and a half, talking to customers, talking to Microsoft, and leading Gen AI projects. And so um, hopefully it's a, a good use of your time. Vineet, anything to add to, to that before we get started? No, that's that's absolutely correct, and um, you know it's it's a pleasure to uh, again be in a forum uh, where we can share some of our learnings. Uh, you know, we have had some very very exciting last few months uh, as I see customers uh, starting to spend more time, energy, and money uh, on uh, you know leveraging generative AI to uh, aim for you know driving the business value that they have been promised. They have been talked about it. Uh, so I've, of course, spoken to a lot of them. Uh, you know, we have done a lot of uh, customer interactions, but actual delivered some, uh, you know, successful customer projects also. So what we thought was, uh, you know, how about sharing some of those uh, best practices and learning uh, with all of you? And um, as I think you saw, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly uh, talk about some of the key best practices, but also just keep in mind that many of those, of course, have to be customized and sort of uh, looked at in your own context, right? Uh, every organization uh, based on the industry has different needs and requirements. And we work with, of course, multiple industries too. So we can provide some of those variations too. I am trying to cover the wide spectrum of uh, all um, different kinds of organizations and what are common between those. Uh, but, you know, we'll be happy to uh, helping uh, look forward to helping you if uh, you know you are interested to talk more about a specific topic uh, dive deeper into that um, 
And from a format perspective, I do have a few slides where I want to, Joe, get the context set. Uh, talk absolutely. about some of the uh, absolutely. Uh, so talk about some of the key things. Uh, maybe I'll take the first ten minutes or so on uh, uh, setting up the uh, stage around you know what we have seen as the various stages uh, for Gen AI adoption by various organizations, uh, right? And this is uh, this is like last one and a half year look like uh, almost like a decade um, because uh, you know people have been uh, you know really trying different things. Technology has been evolving very fast. So, you know, we'll, we'll share with you some of the things that we have seen analysts talking about and our uh, perspective on those. And then I'm sure enough of you have read and uh, looked at various uh, articles, concerns, and, and uh, issues that have been uh, highlighted in the industry about challenges, right? What, what, what is really still stopping some of the organizations? I'll talk about that. Um, and then focus a little bit on, you know, some of the things that uh, has really helped us um, adopt in our actual projects, uh, those five key pillars, and then, you know, summarize with some learnings and best practices. But that's in a very nutshell. I'm going to cover some of these. And then, uh, Joe, I know you have also been a part of many of these uh, conversations and discussions that we have been having with the customers, with, uh, you know, Microsoft and others. Would love to see what are you looking at uh, knowing better uh, about what is happening in the industry and answer some of your questions. Absolutely, yeah. So it, it um, we've we've left plenty of time, as Vineet said. Uh, we've got no more than ten to twelve minutes of presentation that he's going to walk us through next, and that's going to leave us a lot of time for questions. And again, we have a lot of questions that we've gathered from customers, from Microsoft, but we want this to be engaging and a valuable, valuable use of your time. So raise questions in the chat. We'll get to as many of those as we can. Exactly, thank you. Thank you very much. So what, what I will start with, you know, one of the things that I heard, um, and I'm sure you, some of you may have heard some variations of this at one point in time or the other, right? While this is a tech talk, right? The reality is that uh, the very first step uh, um, in, in the journey that you have to take on any such initiative like generative AI or even otherwise, I think is is not always technical, right? There is partnerships, there is uh, delivering value to the company and to your customers and, and, and internal customers uh, th that is important. But how do you reach to that stage, right? Well, everybody says that, you know, let's look at that. This is one of our, um, you know, sort of, uh, learnings on the various stages that we are seeing organizations go through uh, over the last uh, few months. Uh, and I would say, in fact, before even ChatGPT came into the picture, uh, right, th these are these are uh, things that people have been exploring, even with the traditional AI, right? There are early stage companies, uh, people who spend time on, uh, you know, trying out various things and learning about them and experimenting. Uh, you know, going to, you know, uh, tech talks like these and attending uh, sessions and, and knowing about that. Uh, and of course, there are companies that, of course, last year itself, I would say, and we talked about them in our previous webinars uh, also is have been, you know, planning, have been getting started, right? Doing some uh, real uh, def definition of what is the strategy that I should have, right? Doing some proof of concepts and, and uh, planning for those deployments and making sure uh, their concerns are addressed. Uh, there are companies, I would say, in in the in this part of the year, uh, the first half of this year, um, have been moving from even proof of concepts to pilots. And I think that's where uh, it's a very very key and important stage is that where you have to start delivering values. Uh, you have to start having that confidence, uh, you know, provided to the business that what you are investing in, um, you know, is is not just a chatbot, but it's going to uh, have some value. Now, there are two more stages um, at, a, at a high level that I will say is once you establish those, um, there are companies who have invested in this much earlier than many others. And I would say a very small percentage, and I'll talk about what we have seen in one of the IDC studies, but there are companies who have been expanding their AI projects uh, generally, right? And Gen AI is now the bolt on to that or even, even, a, even a new kid on the block kind of a thing. Um, and believe me, there are very few companies in the world, but you will see those success stories being talked about uh, where 
where they have been already creating good business value. And those are the learnings. Those are the ones that uh, we hear, uh, you know, people shouting from the rooftop about uh, being able to um, address business uh, concerns. Uh, they were the they were the they were the adventurous ones, uh, and we have been fortunate to work with a couple of them in the last few months, where they are ready to say yes, there are challenges, but let's try it out, let's experiment, let's let's make sure you put all the controls and the guardrails, and really deliver on the promise that has been there for AI and Gen AI is business value creation. Now it's not never a linear path, right? It it's it's going to be always sort of rotating. But what I also see is where we are right now when we are recording this session today is middle of uh, 2024. When we encounter organizations, the ones that I've been speaking to and would love to hear your thoughts, they are somewhere in this uh, phrase, right? There are folks who are still exploring, uh, right? Uh, maybe due to industry concerns or or some of the issues that they have um, around just, just the just the requirements of their data and and users and and uh, in certain cases some regions um, have uh, different kinds of uh, compliance uh, requirements. But majority of them are in this sort of the middle stage of either they are already getting started, they have been doing POCs. Uh, you know, a couple of them we have been looking at expanding. That's why you know it's it's part of it. What I do see is many of them get stuck in this sort of this this sort of a valley of yeah, I did the planning. I am confident that it will work, but I'm probably there are concerns. Uh, you know, people within my companies are um, you know um, sharing some concerns. I'm hearing horror stories about what is happening in the uh, industry, and people have rolled out some chatbot, and you know it caused uh, uh, financial damage to uh, or uh, and to rep uh, reputation of a company. So I think this is where they are stuck. And what I want to talk about is what we are seeing in terms of addressing some of these concerns. And you should think about it, where are you? And if you are in the early stages, that's fine. If you are much ahead, great. Uh, we would love to see how we can sort of help you. And this is certainly you know, uh, not our analysis, but something that I have uh, uh, you know, seen from the IDC research, and which is also, I would say, uh, is starting to get old. This was late last year. Um, that we um, saw this November 2023 that you see. So I'm sure these numbers have changed, uh, right, as you can imagine. But you, but if you just see the pattern, right, there are those, you know, sort of the people on the fence organization that are about 8% or so, which is, you know, not the ones that you're focusing on. But you see the ones that have deployed in pilot. And if that was in November, hopefully some of them have moved to the next stage. And if they're not, why have they not moved is something that we should consider. And we have been fortunate to engage with a few of them and move them from just piloting to actually uh, doing some production deployments. I was gonna, I was gonna but, say, uh, Vineet, I was thinking about late 2023 when we had a previous CTO Tech Talk Live and we were wondering right. if anybody was gonna move from excitement to execution. It sounds like people first half of the year, some, Excited to hear some of the case studies you're going to reference. That, that's that's absolutely right. I, I think a lot last year, as I was say, was for excitement. This year is for execution, and I think uh, probably next year um, execution will continue. But as you will see, I think we will start talking about the third stage of scaling. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm talking about majority of the customers. There are going to be people on. Uh, both end of the spectrum, who may still be, uh, you know, still evaluating even even this year, and some of them who may have, you know, uh, you know, moved a lot more ahead. And but the the excitement that has been generated last year, which continues here, there is some disillusionment also, right? There has been there has been enough um, sort of uh, bad news out there. Um, but what are the challenges, right? And 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 just just to quote Gartner, you know, one of my favorites, uh, favorite analyst uh, firm is they believe as they have done research, right, through next year, right, 30% of Genia projects will still be abandoned, right? So they will do those execution that we are talking about within this year, but they will be abandoned. Why would they be abandoned, right? There are various reasons. Um, referring to a corresponding study, uh, right, um, where we have heard back, um, and this is this is this was a very eye-opening sort of a study, and we can share the link if you search for the IDC's business value uh, again from last year. I don't think even after almost ten months, 
uh, many of these challenges have changed. I think the, the one that you see top out there of lack of skilled workers, we experienced that you know, way early into the game. And we said, OK, this is all new technology, right? Um, you know, we, we, we won't be able to find people out there. And how do we how do we plan for it? So, you know, getting people to learn, getting people to train, getting people to experiment, investing a lot, uh, you know, and then, of course, many of the other things that um, people talk about data. Data is important, right? Data foundation. Data is not centralized. Data is not optimized. Uh, but more and more, and I would say this percentage probably has gone up in terms of challenging uh, challenges, sorry, uh, but also how they are being addressed. Now, I want to talk about our learnings around uh, AI governance, risk, security, um, and and any of the things related to if I put it, the solution out there, am I going to sort of give up uh, the information that I don't have control over? So, you know, th those are the those are the challenges that we see. And we can talk more about that, um, uh, how to address those challenges. And, and that's where I want to give you sort of a, a sort of a framework that I have personally uh, learned over the last uh, few months and used some of those in, in our engagements. And, and it basically falls into five different buckets. And this is uh, this is a very interesting case study uh, or, or a study that you should, I think, uh, if you get time, read. Uh, you will see uh, I'm providing sort of a uh, tip of the iceberg summary of those, but there is focus on business strategy. You have to look at technology and data strategy. AI strategy, when we talk about it, it's actually the whole experience of how do you build AI solutions. At the same time, we talk about AI governance, but organization and culture. And that's what I said in the beginning is, Every organization's culture will define how fast are they able to move and how uh, you know effective are they in achieving uh, those solutions. Now, as we were preparing for this CTO Tech Talk, and Joe and I were talking a few uh, weeks ago, uh, you know, I said this. This was probably the statement that I said uh, in in my own sort of term is that we have been successful, uh, and there are many other organizations that have been successful in delivering for customers, right? how do we sort of continue to replicate it, right? And um, as a precursor to this uh, tech talk, I did publish a blog, um, you know, please go and read it. It'll have a lot more details. I've, I've uh, sort of provided a framework that we have uh, employed in, in running those projects. Uh, and I want to provide the uh, same summary out here, but those five steps is available. You can scan the QR code or just go to that URL. We'll, we'll be sending out uh, this uh, thing. So let's talk a minute about uh, you know um, some more details around each one of them, and then I think we can um, you know explore uh, more uh, details about uh, what Joe has also been hearing. So when we talk about business strategy, what it means is you have to really spend time, right? And business strategy is not your uh, generic business strategy; it has to be specific to the value that AI and and specifically Gen AI uh, can create, right? Uh, there have been enough data strategy, I think, happening with CDOs role coming to the picture over the last, I would say, 10 years or so, right? Uh, tying that to the next level of uh, capabilities of the platforms, capabilities of the technologies, uh, right? You have to look at the use cases, and we have, we have more sort of guidance around that. As I said in the beginning, you have to look at that business value. Uh, technology is going to be the one that is driving it. And you know, people have used terms like AI first, uh, you know, moving on from mobile and cloud first. And, and that's where I think data has to be kept in mind. The architecture, you know, we have been having discussions, uh, you know, while we are a software consulting uh, firm, uh, we have been still having discussions where there is uh, a better choice to maybe buy certain capabilities rather than build all the time. So it's a build versus buy decision. Um, how do you host it and, and as the, title says, how do you look at scalability, security, right? That's where the actual um, experience and, and the whole software development life cycle evolution needs to come into the picture for designing, building, testing, um, and, and deploying it for different business users. And, and you know, that's, that's the most, I would say, uh, you know, complex and the uh, time where you have to spend in thinking about it. Uh, at the same time, as I said, this is a new world, not only over the last 18 months, but I would say over the last four to five years as the AI winter has ended and uh, organizations have been looking at it, 
you know, defining a new role like chief AI officer, uh, right, or, or some variant of that, um, having support from leadership and making sure that whatever change management you need to implement, uh, you know, is incorporated in the organization. Otherwise, it will again be, oh, it's a technical solution and, and it may or may not work. And last but not the least, by any stretch of imagination, is a lot more importance on the whole concept of AI governance, right? Security, I think, is just one element of it. There are data-related aspects that have been worked upon for years and years, but they become more critical. They become more important to relook at and re, um, you know, via, so to say, uh, in the age of the Gen AI. And of course, you know, as I've done uh, last year itself, and responsible AI principles are very, very much applicable for many organizations to continue to look at, uh, you know, uh, adhering it. Platform vendors are making sure their platforms are, uh, you know, uh, addressing those. And that's where I think these five pillars is not a overnight or even a few weeks of months of journey, right? This is a very long journey. You have to look at various aspects. And I'll conclude with this is you saw the companies that I talked about in terms of the five stages where they may be. What we have also seen and, and the study also talks about uh, some of those is at every stage, right? If you are, let's say, in the early stage or if you're in the scaling stage, right? The importance of one of these pillars changes, right? There is sort of a priority that you put in which pillar do I need to focus more on, right? For if I'm in that particular stage. So as you move through stages in your AI journey, right? You have to consider that they are not all at the same level, right? Based upon my organizational maturity uh, of various, uh, you know, technologies, right? I have to focus maybe on uh, organization and culture, uh, you know. So we will be able to provide you more uh, guidance and study, of course, covers some of that also uh, around based upon where you are, which pillar may be a uh, first priority for you, and then next, and then next. Not that, you know, uh, some of the pillars are ignored, but there are different activities, there are different uh, actions you will do under each pillar based upon where you are. Yeah, and as you said so earlier, th th this isn't a linear uh, path either. So um, you'll you'll exactly. be exactly. you kind of have one foot in multiple pillars, right? And always be revisiting. Absolutely, and 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 you will see that uh, you know while while I talk about these uh, on just on one slide, uh, each of these topics, uh, I think we can spend uh, probably a few hours, uh, you know, diving deeper into uh, what all is included. And on that note, Joe, I will say, you know, you tell me what have you been also hearing as you have been speaking to customers. Uh, we have been working with a lot of, um, you know, uh, customers in the events that we have been uh, doing jointly with Microsoft yep. uh, and hearing a lot of feedback. Yeah. And rather than give you a personal uh, perspective, what I've done, Vineet, as you know, is yeah. I've compiled questions that really fall under all of these pillars um, from our clients, from Makes our sense. partners like Microsoft. Um, and I'm going to ask them in the form of questions because this is, from our perspective at WinWire, the prevalent questions that are on the minds of both customers and prospects and partners right now. Um, so is it okay if I dive into some of the questions that I've put together? Yeah, here? let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about this all day, but I think <laughs> it's, it's important to uh, narrow down to, as the topic of the title says, what are the real life scenarios that we are hearing and how can we address those? Yep. And, and as I start, everyone, uh, please, um, if something comes to mind that we're not covering, but that it's important to you, um, please put the question in the chat and we'll either get to it in the next uh, 35 minutes or so, or we'll follow up with you one-on-one -on -one afterwards. Okay, so let's let's start at a macro level, Vineet, if that's okay. Um, sure, please. You know, in the last year and a half, you've had all these conversations with customers and prospects and you've led projects. Um, has there been a few case studies that have surfaced as the the ones that are are most dominant on the minds of executives. Um, funny side note, as you 
get ready to answer that question. I, I know we both know a major hospital in the New York City metro area that yes. we That's talked it. to very early on with Gen AI and they compiled 60 plus use cases. And you recently checked in with them and they hadn't gotten really started on any of them. So I, there's probably a lot of paralysis, too much information, where do I start? So I'm just wondering, is there, is there a use case or two that you would recommend that this hospital and others start with? Yeah, I think I think that is an important element of, as you saw, the first pillar of the business strategy. Uh, I think that's what I saw many organizations, uh, CIOs, CDOs, uh, even CISOs getting involved um, in, in putting together, okay, I think first thing you need to do is put all the use cases. And here are these so many Excel files I can tell you that I've seen uh, created that I want to do all of this stuff. Now, the reality is I don't think you should or you can do all of that in one go or even in the next few months. That's where spending time and energy on which use cases have a better ROI, uh, which use cases are also going to be less risky uh, because it is a new world, it's a new technology area uh, that you are experimenting. Uh, and as some of you may have already seen, and it's similar to us, what we have seen is uh, anything that is more conversational between the organization providing services to the customer or to internal customers, their employees and their, their de departments, I think has been picked up as one of the first ones, uh, right? So yeah, there are enough chatbots that have been uh, developed and, and deployed uh, across. And I, let, let me see, you know, I can talk about it, right? But when you look at those use cases and if you put them into like a excel excel or a chart or a whiteboard whatever you want to call it i think the important exercise is to look at putting some business objectives against each one of them what is it going to potentially drive right is it customer experience employee experience is it productivity is it going to actually have an impact on the revenue right uh, you have to tie it to them and of course some of them could also have a direct impact. Some of them may have an indirect impact. For example, customer service, right, which is the I think the most talked about uh, examples, and and there are both, you know, sort of scary stories about companies laying off customer service executives and AI responding to customers. Uh, I think I think from a from a from a large deployment or something like that, we are few years away. If if that, um, I think there are scenarios where uh, helping get knowledge, and that's, that's a key phrase, out of a lot of information about your, let's say your products or your services, or, or, or even within uh, uh, the boundaries of an organization around your policies and everything else, right? How do you distill it down? How do you provide it? And you provide it in a manner that it, again, either saves time or changes the experience. That is an exercise of prioritization you have to do, and and we have sort of a framework where we spend you know sometimes half a day or one day to get started with that, and it's, it won't be done in one day, for example. But create a portfolio uh, of a plan and saying, okay, these are the top ones, maybe top five, and uh, you know within that should we take out a couple of them and try it out and and create champions. Uh, you know we have seen, as I said, customer service um, related, both and internal employee services. Uh, have been the most uh, sort of the exciting ones. Uh, there are more um, scenarios around specific domain solutions uh, there, where there is a lot more time being spent, for example, in healthcare, right? As you were mentioning, the hospital one, uh, if I talk about, right? Uh, people are just used to doing a, uh, a certain things in a certain way. And let's say scheduling an appointment, right? Which is a day-to-day -day thing for anyone, right? And there have been tools and there have been enough scheduling applications that have been created, takes a few minutes, right? Um, when you call in or somebody goes in online. And of course, there are, there are just in the case of healthcare, there are organizations, uh, you know, like Epic and all that have been doing amazing work and now implementing AI to even see how time can be saved, customer experience is better, and there is a higher probability that when you are scheduling these appointments, uh, there is also in the long run cost saving 
because if you go and read somewhere about the cost of a missed appointment in a in a healthcare scenario, uh, it costs you know a lot of it because the resources are wasted. You know, it could have been given to somebody else who was needing. So there are yep. lots of those you know um, aspects that you have to look at it and say, let's try it out. Can I reduce my scheduling experience time from I don't know five minutes to two minutes? But let's save time. And we have heard millions of dollars of saving that can happen. And that's where you choose those uh, business cases to um, you know, implement. So doing an envisioning session, spending a few hours, you can identify those top three to five. That sounds like it's the right number of use cases to prioritize and, and execute on. That, that is right. And, and that's what we have done with customers. And customers have done on their own. I mean, let me be honest, right? I mean, this is uh, everybody, everybody's board and everybody's CXOs mm -hmm. have been asking their next level to say, Guys, go figure it out, right? Yeah, and and they've yeah. been spending energies on that, but they come up with this, as I said, dozens of use cases. And my first point is, great, we will do all of that, but let's identify the ones that will have the higher value. And it's a push and pull. And you have to get business involved. That's another important part. CIOs traditionally, of course, I would say over the last 15 years at least, with the cloud and everything else, and SaaS versus, you know, build versus buy kind of decisions have been working with the business it is super critical in the um, you know in the age of uh, gen ai to look at how business is going to really get value out of it otherwise they will go and again use some llm based solution out there as a saas solution and say i'm putting my data out there and i'm getting the value thank you very much i can't wait for you so you have to get the business involved in all these prioritization discussions yeah. So before we move on, you mentioned healthcare and gave a, a mm -hmm. couple examples there. Is there another industry besides healthcare that is kind of leaders in the clubhouse at this point in terms of adopting Gen AI? I think retail retail has been a very, very interesting uh, ecosystem. And and one of the th things that I wrote a few uh, weeks ago, um, you know, we'll, we'll have, be happy to share with you is that I think many of these industries they already have KPIs and metrics on how they track their customer experience and what services do they provide. And mobile apps have been doing a great stuff, uh, all, all that stuff, right? But how do you insert Gen AI uh, related experiences so seamlessly? And not always a chatbot. I, I always say it's not always a chatbot, right? It, it has to be probably a little bit more than that. How do you insert it into the experience that it is actually invisible? Right, that that's an article that I wrote a few weeks ago. Is AI has to become invisible, uh, and and people just get the value out of it. Uh, retail, I would say, is is one. As you start going into the core of the business, uh, you know there are there are there are experiences in manufacturing uh, which has been very very uh, uh, effective in uh, not only the Gen AI but the traditional AI combined with Gen AI improving your entire you know, uh, production life cycle uh, and different stages, uh, collaboration between suppliers and partners, uh, improving those applications by introducing, uh, you know, newer newer ways to analyze data, newer ways to process data faster and increasing, increasing the sort of the time that is available for humans that are involved in this to focus on uh, you know, more more sort of a, a collaboration with others rather than being heads down into trying to figure it out. Uh, some 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 PDF that has a lot of data. Let Gen AI do that for you, and then you use the analysis created out of it to provide that service to your customers. So, I want I, next question. I as we segue uh, to companies that are a little further along in the maturity model that you shared, Vineet. Um, mm -hmm. What do you say to enterprise customers? that have maybe completed a few POCs, but beyond that have not been able to scale or expand adoption internally and maybe feel stuck and kind of in neutral and don't know how to kind of keep things moving. What do you say to those customers? Yeah, and that's what I that's what I was covering in the in the couple of slides before that is I think we do see those um, you know, people uh, you know focus on those and 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 as I look at it uh, right the once you once you have figured out these and this is not always linear this is not always one comes after another some of these have to be done in parallel uh, right what we 
help customers think about, and I would suggest that you do it within your organization, is look at areas that are going to be super critical to build the foundation of your uh, AI ready applications. So infrastructure, yeah, it says, oh, I can go and deploy on the cloud, but believe me, in the in the Gen AI space, it's 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 a little bit more complicated, I would say, right? Because where is your data stored? Where is your application going to run? How are you going to deploy it at scale um, and securely, uh, right? And still have access to the data. There are many infrastructure, security-related, uh, performance-related aspect that you have to think about, which is true for many traditional applications also. Uh, it's 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 the next level of complexity because there is there's a lot of there's a lot of different parts that you're now trying to put together, um, which have existed for many years and bolting on this whole Gen AI application on top of it. Um, and focusing on, of course, the, sort of the heart of the whole matter, the data. How is your data uh, stored? How is your data uh, processed, right? Is the data available? Uh, you know, is it clean? Uh, is it going to be processed by Gen AI or the, this, this confusing and you know sort of overused term hallucination come into the picture? Uh, LLMs just don't hallucinate just for themselves. They are, of course, because they're not able to process the data um, in the right format because the original data itself has issues. Security of the data is, is another uh, thing where we have seen customers are very worried. Right? And I, I, I speak to many organizations, specifically regulated uh, organiz um, you know, uh, companies that are in regulated and compliance areas. And their first point is, okay, this is black box for me. Right, yeah. all the LLMs that you talk about in OpenAI, right? Why would I provide my PII data or in healthcare, for example, PHI data to these uh, ones? And you have to again go back to the drawing board of the technology and talk about how all the hyperscalers, right? Azure and Microsoft, from, Azure from Microsoft and uh, you know AWS and GCP are ensuring that. Yes, this all came out of like a open source public forum. Even OpenAI itself, the first, um, you know, and the big ones and Anthropic and all are putting the right guardrails around that. And that's a journey. That's a journey both on the providers, the hyperscalers that are providing and the, and the, and the LLM providers that are enabling those controls, guardrails in their platform, but also organizations to get to know about them better. Um, and overcome their fear and apprehensions uh, about the data, about the access. Um, and then I have I have some very specific um, you know, learnings um, as we have implemented these solutions around security and those. But I would say, if I were to just summarize data quality, uh, security, and getting the right infrastructure so that you can scale are, are the, are, I think the top two, three things uh, that we see challenges uh, when we are starting about implementation, right? Uh, of course, you saw in the previous slides at a high level, there are challenges of even just having people with enough skill sets, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, but but th those are the ones that we see that people keep on noodling over and spending time. Uh, and we have had multiple rounds of discussions with some of the prospects to give them more confidence. Um, uh, the all, all the providers are doing their part uh, in making sure that. Uh, Customers are comfortable that the promise that is uh, provided from these platform is done in a secure and a scalable and and, and more um, more confident that they can be more confident about the solution that they develop. Yep. So um, an assumption I have, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Um, yeah. I, I hear from you, and I hear from uh, some of our clients that. Perhaps they approach Gen AI project planning and delivery using traditional SDLC um, models. And if they're doing that, my assumption is correct, you're probably going to say that's not the right way to approach these projects. I mean, I mean that that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say it's it's not about that strict that that is not the right way to approach it. Um, you know, people will, of course, feel. Or maybe more what are the different? What, maybe maybe the right question is sure. what are the differences? Absolutely, yeah. No, I, I think I think that's the point. Is what are the differences, or how do you need to look at evolving uh, those? And and that's that's where the third pillar comes into the picture, right? Is 
Okay, so we have been doing this for ages, right? Um, you know, every organization, be it a product development or an IT organization, say, oh, we have an agile process and we have scrums and we have all these things and, and we have tools, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, let's write some Python code and write some API calls to the LLMs uh, API that are available and boom, we have a solution. I think people have realized um, as, and this was probably true a year or more than a year from uh, back from now, early part of 2023, we saw many of those, the ones that were in the exploding stage did that. But as you start moving up the chain in terms of building solutions that have to go into production, I think you need all layers of your SDLCs to evolve. I don't think I'm saying you throw away what all you have, but you have to look at Gen AI and AI specific um, you know, tools, technologies, uh, certain processes. We have, we have applied uh, in our project execution uh, different uh, ways to do uh, you know testing, for example, um, of the AI um, tools, right? And of course, AI testing has not been new. It's been happening. Gen AI makes it a lot more complicated, uh, right? Um, uh, things like red teaming and all is 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 becoming very very more critical, I would say, right? But then there are tools uh, that you should look at it, right? And tools that are more to do with um, you know. An experience for your entire SDLC, right? So, just for example, in the Microsoft ecosystem, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're probably going to answer what I was about to ask. Are there any <laughs> tool? Are, are there any Gen, Gen AI specific development tools that have impressed you and have stood out from others? Absolutely. Let, let me actually show you a snapshot of one of them, uh, which I think would be very interesting. And some of you may have already uh, looked at uh, these. Um, you know, Microsoft for one, and of course, AW has Bedrock and others. Microsoft has been investing with their decades of experience in giving a good developer experience. And I was at the Build Conference in the month of May of this year, and you know, very very exciting learnings out there. Um, and I'm sure many of you have looked at uh, what all came out of it. But this platform around Azure AI Studio, right? This is like you know the, the 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 sort of the one place where you can come in as a team and collaborate, right? This has aspects around the the, the specific to Gen AI and and LLMs and even SLMs is you know you are not going to be building just against one particular model. Then how do you look at different models? So there are concepts like model catalog, right? So think of if you're building a web app um, in, in the last uh, uh, few years, uh, right? You choose a language, uh, you choose a database, um, and you know you, you sort of go ahead with that. Here, there are many more choices to be made, right? So you have to look at models, right? Okay, how do I select the model? There are cost elements, there are performance elements, there are benchmarks. So one place where organizations can look at what is available out there in terms of accuracy, coherence, and all of these, and, and get to know. And these are updated, right? So this is all on the cloud. Um, companies are providing that. AWS has a similar um, environment that you can look at it. Okay, if I were to just look at uh, Cohere, right, I will get to know more about where does this stand on accuracy? Where does it stand on coherence, right? How has it been happening in different models? So I can make some informed choices uh, around that. Prompt engineering, the most sort of talked about term and phrase, I would say, for the last uh, few months and years. Uh, best practices around that, catalogs around that, right? So all this is good. This is knowledge that you're getting. And and Microsoft, for one, is making sure that last 20, 25 years or more even of the other AI services that they have uh, been working on in their R&D, and, and still building solutions, and those are all sort of brought in together with the Gen AI capability. So speech, translation, one place stop where you can use these services and integrate it into your applications. The interesting part is when you go to the next level, right? When, what I mean by that is, okay, I figured out this is my evaluation and planning stage. I have to do the actual development. It's the same environment. So this is like one project I want to show you, right? It's, it's a... 
it's a solution accelerator that we have uh, at Winwire. Uh, and this is the entire development environment that my team uh, collaborates on and works on. And you will see the same thing. Which models am I using? What prompts am I using? And then there are testing environments. Uh, this is this is one of the sort of the heart of the coding called prompt flow. And there are similar uh, platforms around these like Langchain and others that are there. This is what Microsoft does well, right? On, on providing a GUI based environment, but still with flexibility of coding. Now, this is not your typical coding environment, right? Joe, even if you have seen, uh, you know, um, you know, developers coding, they have a lot of code and then, you know, this is this this requires a lot more parameterization, so to say, right? Because there are these inputs, there are outputs, LLMs, deployment. So it's not just code. There are a lot of other things, so to say, that you need to consider to make sure that the entire Gen AI um, solution that you're building, right, is sort of put together. And this is one fantastic development environment, I believe. And it continues to evolve, right? So it launched a few months ago. In build, there were a lot many more features that were announced. And you see a bunch of them are in preview still, right? Uh, these are the activities. These are the stages in SDLC that we recommend that customers should start looking at in building uh, things like evaluation, right? Um, so yes, you do testing yeah, no, this, and do it. This, this, is, Go this is good stuff. And you're showing us um, Azure AI Studio, but the, the solution framework or accelerator that you're showing is actually WinWire IP, Knowledge Fusion. And there's more information if you're interested on our website on Knowledge Fusion. I want to keep us moving. We're, we've got about 14 okay. minutes, Vineet, um, and sure. I've got a whole bunch more questions. Um, before we leave this topic, um, right. new development tools mean mm -hmm. new roles or resources um, specifically for Gen AI that companies probably need to consider investing in. Is there a new role um, specific to Gen AI projects that uh, you're seeing the leading companies make? I think every every um, you know newer technology uh, gives us an opportunity to apply a new label, right? So a few years back, when DevOps came into the picture, then DevOps engineers uh, became important. Then we started having full stack engineers and you know newer terms. So similarly, I think there are and and let me see if I can bring up that slide and jump to that. Um, uh, yeah, I think this this one would be good. Um, th this is this is I think what you're talking about, right? So we have seen. Technical architects that are part of almost every project, right? Becoming right. Gen AI architects, but Gen AI architects are also important uh, roles where they need to expand their knowledge uh, around the responsible AI principles, these these performance considerations specific to the Gen AI part of it, and and all the tools that I uh, talked about, right? So they have to also roll up their sleeves a little bit. Developers, um, while they are standard, as I showed you. They have different and additional tasks to do during the development cycles. Um, QA teams, of course, have different, absolutely different tools in the age of Gen AI. Uh, DevOps has to evolve into AI ops and LLM ops. And I will say, don't forget all the aspects that I talked about involving, uh, uh, you know, business into it. We need the techno business analyst role to be super critical not just in the initial stages when you're doing the evaluation, but I think throughout this entire life cycle as a feedback loop, um, and the BSAs has been a role that has been happening for many years now, in the Gen AI, they have to be also understanding what is it that is going to be possible, right? What are the potential risks that I would say? And as we have evolved our teams and their skill sets and the tools that they use, uh, right? Using Gen AI itself, like the GitHub Copilot, it's sold by developers um, and using it for testing, using it for documentation by the business analyst. Um, there is an evolution of this entire SDLC cycle and the roles that is important. Um, we spend time and energy as we have planned our projects to fine tune those, you know, uh, not the LLM fine tuning, this is the fine tuning of our project structure and look at um, how this new team structure needs to work. It's still agile. It's still sure. do scrum, but uh, you know it's it's it it takes a different set of uh, uh, depth of the skill set that is required uh, because technology is evolving. They need to keep up with those skill sets also, uh, right? On on a weekly, monthly basis. So 
people are excited. I would say, you know, people people have been spending hours of extra time, and this is this is a this is a new age of um, you know people, um, you know, and when I say people as in technologists of all sorts, learning new things, and yeah, it will take experience to <laughs> show the results. Sure. Uh, but just going through an, uh, training is not enough. I think you have to get your hands dirty. Okay. So I have two more topics I want to cover with you before we end. Sure. And I want to give adequate time to both because I think these are both on the minds of anybody who's listening or joining us today. So sure. co-pilot, co-pilot. I have heard a lot of confusion around co-pilot. And what I mean by that is, you know, co-pilot is newer to the market. How does that impact customers that have been evaluating and maybe implementing Gen AI solutions? What role do you see going forward with Microsoft Copilot playing in the Gen AI solution landscape? Yeah, you're right. And I think Microsoft, uh, you know, had a, like like they did the first sort of a big uh, uh, deal with the whole open AI partnership. Uh, and then, you know, Satya's whole aspect about copilot and and you know i'm i'm sort of writing a lot about uh, copilot and how copilot fits into it i think joe we should probably plan a dedicated session just talking session. about copilot good, right? good 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 idea yeah but 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 at a high level i think think of copilot as all those genia capabilities that people have been talking about and addressing right being provided by your platform to a certain extent Right in the context of your organization, that's where you know Microsoft being in the enterprise with uh, the entire suite of uh, products that we all use, uh, and similarly other others also. Right, Google has done the same thing with their Google Workspace and everything else. Is building those LLM or Gen AI capabilities into their core products and addressing two three key things: productivity, time saving. Right, and again. People don't need to always build that. That's a build versus buy decision where Copilot could be a good way to get started in experiencing, let's say, document summarization, uh, right? And and analyzing and, and doing all the activities uh, that they have been doing. In fact, Microsoft itself has been evolving Copilot. Uh, in, the, in the general Gen AI space, the whole concept of you know, agents is coming into the picture, which Microsoft is investing, everybody's investing in, right? But Think of Copilot as a pre-built, available, something that you can start using, right? Not only in your day-to-day -day work, but also apply to some of those use cases. Remember the one that I was talking about in the beginning is you have this long list of use cases. You know, when we go through them, we some of them now start getting assigned as, oh, Copilot can do that. I don't need right. to probably build something like that. But then there are there are there are scenarios where say okay copilot can do that but then you see copilot studio and as i said we'll we'll cover in more details later you may have to build some extensions to what the uh, platforms like microsoft is providing as a copilot is i need to integrate with this backend system uh, right so that's where maybe a, a customized copilot uh, experience will address that particular use cases there are use cases which require a lot more coding lot more integration lot more controls uh, that's where tools like Azure AI Studio come into the picture. But I think Copilot is a good uh, way to evaluate. Can you meet some of the business needs, business things that you're hearing, right? Uh, by more by licensing, because you know it's a per user per month uh, subscription licenses, uh, and then you put less effort in building it from grounds up. And every organization will have a different uh, level, right? Uh, some organization yeah. will say Copilot is limiting for me. I still need to build my own copilot. So I'm seeing all sorts of experience happening. But copilot is going to be is right here to stay. Uh, I'm telling you, I use it on a daily basis among all of them. And and it is just it's just a different experience. I say it's a new UI uh, that we have been moved from, you know, the green screens. And I'm old enough to remember green screen to uh, you know clients and then web browser to mobile to now a copilot experience. Um, just don't think of it always as a chatbot. Think of it as conversational. Think of it as maybe I say something and then I set up something and there are agents that are doing the job and I don't need to be always in front of chatting away uh, on, on getting certain things done. 
So it, it, it's certainly something that I think we should look at covering in more detail if that is the interest that you're hearing. Yeah, I think so. It, I, think, yeah. I think we'll take that as kind of a next step because like you said, we could probably spend a full hour on Copilot, customized versus out of the box, so to speak. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. I want to end on uh, risk and security. And you mentioned that in your, uh, in your setup for this. Um, what have we done at WinWire to ensure that we are delivering secure Gen AI solutions for our customers? Um, very, I very, think that's, very that's on everybody's mind. Yeah, very, very critical. Uh, you know, as, as you see, I think uh, we can we are doing it in shorter sprints, uh, but you know, making sure you identify dependencies and security is a critical element in the case of Gen AI solutions. Let me see if I can bring up a list of sort of learnings that we have done, and and I'm going to just flash this also around scalability uh, and management that we have talked about that we have incorporated into many of our. Uh, customer projects, um, you know, and we'll be happy to dive deeper into if you are struggling with one of those. But going back to your original questions, I think security related um, aspects. Um, look at all the platform capabilities that are provided by the hyperscalers, right? So uh, just talking about a um, couple of projects that we have done on um, Azure OpenAI, right? Th these technologies have existed, but they become more important and critical to ensure you are using them uh, in, in the context of the Gen AI solution. But there are third party tools also, um, Nemo.ai, Guardrails.ai, and, and those are the ones that are just focusing on addressing different levels, right? If I can give you a quick uh, snapshot of what I was showing you um, in the, in the uh, Azure AI Studio, uh, Azure AI Studio has this whole concept of uh, you know, content filters, where you can actually build, this is a platform capability, where you can actually build, uh, you know, different levels of controls of the data that is coming into your solution. Violence, hate, sexual, self-harm, prompt shield, jailbreaking, different levels of controls, and, and do that even for the output that is being generated to control what the LLMs are doing. And this is not just these tools, this requires a lot more uh, energy to be spent on evaluation uh, as we talk about it, right? So there are tools to do evaluation of whatever is being generated out of the implementation that you have done, feed it a sample data, uh, get the human into the loop and, and, and tag them as saying, oh, no, that's not correct. Learn from it. Uh, using um, other technologies like prompt variations, um, you know, which is part of the prompt flow. Um, I think, it's it's again a topic that we have covered in the past, and and this is one area where not only the platforms and the LLM uh, providers are uh, spending a lot of time energy. The whole concept of responsible AI, I think, is going to continue to evolve in terms of both tools, principles, and then you know geo-specific compliances. Right, Europe has different levels of uh, requirements from such kind of solutions versus the US versus maybe other countries in the world, right? So it's again a large topic, but we have been very successful, I would say, in leveraging uh, what just from example in the Azure OpenAI platform as a part of the Azure AI Studio that are available, the ones that I showed you, um, and getting some of the evaluation tools all combined and following those best practices to ensure we are building uh, a very secure and scalable application. For sure. Um, I think we're going to end it there. Um, we've got about a minute before people are going to start dropping for other calls. This was great. Uh, I hope everyone who's joined us today and who listens on replay got a lot out of this. We'd love to continue the discussion. So feel free to reach out again, marketing at Windwire. I personally monitor that so I can get a message to Vineet. We can schedule one of those envisioning sessions that we spoke about. Um, and just continue and the conversation. I want to show you, yeah, I want to just show you for everyone, right? Who is, who is for probably oh, this, watching this, it? This, and this is this is scary for a CMO. You're taking me to a deep dark <laughs> place, but yeah, go ahead. 
<laughs> no, but I, I just want to sort of leave it at this is, you know, this is this is the realization, right? This is not all just English that I've been covering. Uh, you have to put it into the, this context of uh, these are not just chatbots where you call an API, get a response back. You have to look at various pieces. So we'll be happy to uh, interact with you. Uh, please reach out, as Joe was saying. Happy to look at a similar solution that may uh, be provided to your organization. But as I said, in a summary, right? Prioritizing those use cases, looking at the right tools in the SDLC model, newer team, team structures, structures uh, and roles, and considering security. security. Yeah, yep. right? keep those in mind to achieve something like this, and we will be happy to partner with you if you need to. Thanks, Vineet. This was great. Um, we'll probably look to schedule a dedicated session next time on Copilot. Look for that maybe in late August, early September. And until then, thank you guys for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. It is a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Joe, uh, working with you. And uh, hopefully, folks who are listening at a later time, you know, get the value out of this. Uh, we are we are here if you need us. Thank you.